Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. I'm Amy Nolte. Today we're going to be studying the music of McCoy Tyner. We're going to be looking at the John Coltrane Quartet recording of My Favorite Things. We're going to, we're going to be taking apart the transcription I've done of McCoy Tyner's playing. The things we're really going to hone in on today about McCoy Tyner are his patience, how deliberate and calculated he can be, his sense of melody, and the rhythmic independence between his hands. It's gonna be fun. Let's go. We all know McCoy Tyner's solo starts out kind of with the melody going through the form of the song. Right, raindrops on roses, ribbons on kittens, all these things. Then McCoy Tyner's solo really takes off because for the first time in the tune thus far, we go to E major. And for a long, long time, we just move through the chords E major, F sharp minor, uh, with an E on the bottom. Just these notes that are in the E major scale, the Ionian mode. We just move through them so that when we're in F sharp minor, we're playing notes from F sharp Dorian. And McCoy is patient. He does this eight times. So I've done it four, but imagine four more times, then he moves on to this. this four times, but here we start to see something important about his left hand. This is almost the only thing he does during his entire solo. So it's a voicing for E major 7. He uses the 3rd, the 5th, and the major 7. And then for the F sharp minor chord, he uses the 3rd, the 5th, and the minor 7. It's so easy. He does a few different rhythms. And we'll, we'll focus on those as we go along. But these are the notes that he plays almost the whole time. So this is the first little pattern I'd like us to work on. I've transcribed it in the meter of 6-4. So you can see we've got six quarter notes in every bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Let's play this pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. Got that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the next part sounds like this. Let's do them both. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's easier if I if I don't count, but you can see the left hand. On the left hand, it's a swing in six four, isn't it? It's it's not. It's so I've got eighth notes going along right here. So see how I have a dotted quarter note. You can give that three eighth notes. This one gets two eighth notes. This one gets four, and this one gets three. Adds right up, doesn't it? Um, so. tricky to put them together. But 
that's the first part. We've got two right hands before there's a left hand. Like that. And then the left hand comes in before the right hand does again. Why don't we look at the keyboard? Let's just look at that first bar. Two, three, four, five, six. Again, four, five, six. Again, four, five, six. It's tricky, but if you break it apart like I taught you with your eighth notes and do it slowly, you'll get it. Let's look at that next bar. First, let's look at just the left hand of that second bar. One and two and three and four and five and six and it's very syncopated dotted quarter to a quarter If you're at your piano, you should play that along with me. And if you're not at your piano, you should clap it with me. And now we play the right hand. Good. And to put them and to put them together, we're gonna to go slower than that. One, two, three. One and two and three and one and two and three and one. So as you can see, you've got those two happen, and then the next two actually happen together. And then this one comes in, and then this one between those. Let's look at the music again. This one happens, then this one happens, then these two happen together. These two, they're together. And then this one, and then this one, this one, and then this one, and then this one. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six. All right, I'm not gonna beat it to death, but there you go. And now I'll show you, we'll just keep going a little bit. Here's the next part. Now, you can see the last part that I taught you, he did, he did those two bars four times. Now we're here, he's gonna do this three times. How patient is McCoy Tyner? So the first thing he does is this eight times. Second thing he does is the thing that we just worked on. And now he's doing this a bunch of times. And now, after three times, here just come the B's. That's it. B's and then G sharps. He's so patient. He's just building something that's magical, isn't he? Um, now, these G sharps become key because on the next page, he comes back with C sharps, but it's already in our ear. We've already kind of heard him do it. I mean, it really makes you wonder if McCoy planned out his solo before he took it. And, and I really think that he did at least parts of it. I think he had parts of it in mind because it's just beautifully constructed. Let's, let's listen to the next part. I'll, I'll show you my hands. this for a while and actually for quite a while and then and then he moves down again I mean you would think that he's comping for somebody he does this eight times I think he's just sitting in the groove he's just thinking gosh Jimmy Garrison sounds so good listen to what Elvin's doing oh my gosh I think McCoy Tyner was just cool to give them something to play over for a little bit. New 
melodic idea. And here's what I'm talking about. This is where, remember before when we played C sharps? Remember how beautiful that is? Well, now, now he's, he's going on, he's moving on. that enough now he's gonna he's gonna move us into a brand new realm now this is maybe one of the most famous mistakes in jazz one of my favorite mistakes in jazz the only way that you know that it's a mistake is that he corrects it on the second time through listen to it play an E, he played an F, F natural, but it's gorgeous, isn't it? I love it anyway. I wonder what McCoy, I mean, he's still alive. If anybody knows him, I wonder if anybody knows what he said when he played that note and they went back and he was like, man, I played one bum note in the whole thing. John Coltrane was probably just like, I liked your bum note, McCoy. But you know, maybe not too. There's a tiny chance that McCoy Tyner meant to play that F natural. I don't really think he did, but, but I mean, he's McCoy Tyner, so maybe he did. What if, I mean, there's the Ionian mode that we talked about it. So as he approaches this F natural, it's the F sharp minor chord that he plays it on, right? Ha! I don't think that he meant to do it. Uh, but to me, it's still magic. I don't know. This, this is the next part I'm going to focus on. His left hand starts to do a new rhythm. This is the rhythm his left hand starts to do. And he, he, he pretty much keeps this consistent. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and he anticipates one. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So he's anticipating one and four. This is the point in the lesson where you should stop my video and get out your metronome. All right, I have set mine at 140. And, and we're gonna anticipate one and we're gonna anticipate four. Ready? good eight bars good eight bars just like that and I think it's great practice so some of you that might be all, as far as you get today is to be able to anticipate the one and the four like that and play along with your metronome others of you you might be able to move on to this next step now he starts to play something and it's debatable some sometimes through these bars he's playing 16th notes and sometimes through these bars I think he's playing triplets I think it's up for debate. Um, and I don't know if he really planned it out. I think the main thing to him was this new melody that he introduces. And, and he just kind of played it. Right there, he kind of keeps it going, but he adds some notes down here, some some subdividing kind of notes, and, and also just some beautiful filler notes, I think. So this is how it goes now. One, two, three, four. It does the first part once and then the second part three times. Let me show it to you, uh, the written music. So here it is. It starts with a C sharp. And let's sing it together. 
on, on beat two. One. Da, 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 See, we're just following these top notes. We're kind of ignoring the bottom ones for now because I haven't told you about them yet. I think I've just mentioned that they are pretty filler notes. Okay. One. Da, 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 da. Now it changes a little. Da, 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 da. So we've got to have those in our brain, that's our, that's our new melody. So uh, my first step is to simply just add these. We don't even have to worry about anticipating them yet. Let's just play them on one and four. And let's turn our metronome back on. Four, five, six. The reason I ask you to sing it is because it's so singable. This came right from McCoy Tyner's heart, you can tell. He's allowed to have a voice like that. But the cool thing is that as a pianist, he can do something trickier than we can do with our voices. The, the next thing that he does, you know, these filler notes I'm talking about, we can't do that with our voices, not accurately. It's too fast. And, and we're not even playing as fast as the recording is, oh my gosh. But there's no, no way a voice could accurately hit all of this. But as a pianist, McCoy can do it. And he knows how it's going to sound before it comes out. And these are his most important notes. So those are the ones I want us to have ringing in our ears, okay? So you're going to have to take yourself through several steps of playing these two bars over and over and over again. But I'm going to show you a little bit how to break it up. So, so let's, let's assume these are 16th notes. And I've written them as 16th notes. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. Just like that. Slower. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll tell you right now that if you're going to be practicing this for a long period of time, your hand might get a little sore. You want to take some time in between your practicing, you know, every, every three or four or five minutes and um, do some finger stretches like this. I like to take my left hand and just stretch my right hand every like that <gasps> what if this was the thumbnail for this video <laughs> ah, it's all right i won't let it be but every now and then a little of that a little of this a little shaking out little, go do something different you know because i don't want to hurt your fingers so let's let's again talk about how the left hand fits remember we're anticipating one and four two three four let's slow down our metronome let's go about one two three four, five, that's about 82. Just to keep your metronome going at 82 and just play your left hand with the anticipations and only this melody. Okay? Next thing, drop your, drop your left hand out and just play your right hand at 82. One. I'm also, um, I'm just barely, barely, barely pressing down the pedal with my with my big toe. Uh, I am barefoot right now. <laughs> so I, I don't want much of that pedal down at all. We don't want it to be so muddy, especially when we're practicing. We'd like to keep some smoothness, some legato, but also retain a bit of crispness. One. And it's also a good idea to practice it without any pedal at all, because you can kind of hold on to these top notes while your left hand is playing these fillers. It's hard to do. Um, but if you, if you just barely feather the pedal, you know, with your big toe or 
the you know left part of your right shoe, whatever you want to call it. Th that'll be really nice, I think. All right. So the next step is to well, it's a hard step, but but let's try it at 82. Before we try it at 82, let's actually talk about what notes the the anticipations are going to come in on. So the first one's going to come in right before right before this beat one, okay? And then we da 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 do da do da do do do. Here's where it is. Halfway through the bar, right before this E happens, on this F sharp. That's where it's at. Again here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right here. It's tricky, and you'll have to go slow, and I think you'll have to go without a metronome to begin with. tricky. Let me show you my hands. And there's a little rest, right? There's a rest before it starts. So that's actually the trickiest part. But let's even put our metronome less than 82. Put it at 65. Five, six. Just like that. So at 65, it's still really challenging. You're gonna have to work your way up, all the way up to the original. What even is the original? Let me check. Now the original is right up at about 168, 169. Now, if you try to play these 16th notes at this speed, it's really, really hard. I can just barely do it. And if you listen to McCoy, this is why I, I think he's playing triplets. And some, it just sometimes you just can't hear the clarity in, in this pattern with your with your thumb and index finger when when McCoy's playing. So sometimes it sounds more like uh, triplets. And as you can see, that's an easier to think easier thing to do with the metronome. So you can practice it both ways. If, if it's easier for you to do the triplets and you can't quite handle the 16th notes, just practice it with the triplets. And in that case, it's a little bit different where your left hand comes in. Let's slow that down a little bit. That might be easier for you to work up to tempo. Now, the other thing that we didn't really talk about was this part. This part that I didn't, I didn't even write in for the left hand because I was tired of transcribing it all the time, being about the same. Um, but just to play these C sharps with the left hand going along is really valuable. Now, when McCoy is playing this, this isn't ex exactly right in my transcription because he doesn't keep this rhythm. He, um, he kind of keeps the rhythm from, from up here, which was that, and then sometimes he plays that one. Sometimes he anticipates like he, like he does during the part where we just practice that part. He, he kind of mixes it up, but I don't think it's that important, but I do think it's important to be able to play these quarter notes while you keep something going with your left hand and practice with a metronome. So let's pick this rhythm. Um, Let's 
let's set our metronome. Let's tap that. Let's set it at 140. So we're getting, we're approaching the speed of John Coltrane's quartet. Here we go. we've seen a really cool thing. We've seen how McCoy Tyner is patient and he's calculated and he has beautiful melodies and his rhythmic independence is pretty astounding, isn't it? I mean, to break it apart like this and look at all the intricate little left-hand rhythms that he does is really cool. And, you know, even, even as you take this in and it seems like a lot to take in. It is a lot to take in. Slow it down. Don't ever let it intimidate you. All you've got to do is slow this stuff down. Use a metronome and it's going to be okay. You're going to be able to handle it. And the cool thing about your metronome is you can just keep making it move faster and faster. And then if it's too fast, you can make it move slower and slower. It's up to you. I had a really good time doing that. It might seem tedious, but it's to me it's really fun. And like I said, just don't get overwhelmed. If you feel overwhelmed with anything, pull out your metronome, slow things down. Everybody goes slow at first. <laughs> and I hope you had fun learning from McCoy Tyner. He's a treasure. He's a personal hero of mine. And I'm so thankful he's still with us. I got to see him once at the Jazz Bakery. It must have been around 2002 with my husband. He took me for my birthday. McCoy Tyner walked in the room and um, I just started crying. And it was absolutely beautiful. I got to shake his hand at the end. It was a magical night. Um, so thanks once again for deconstructing and studying with me today about one of the best pianists ever to walk the earth, McCoy Tyner. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.